Well, thank you, Heather. Uh, I'm honored to be here with all of you, and I appreciate uh, the shout out for Utah. And uh, let me invite all of you to come to Utah. Uh, it's a wonderful state. Uh, I was just mentioned outside that we just got recognized by Four Door Travel, which is a world travel organization, as the number one travel destination in the world. That's not, yeah. Uh, that's not just our ski resorts, we call it the greatest snow on earth, and uh, our five national parks, or our 43 state parks, it's the whole state. And it's really a tribute to the beauty that we have there, that the good Lord's given to us, and the wonderful people that we have. And so we certainly invite you to come and, and visit and let us know. Uh, we'll roll out the red carpet for all of you to come and visit Utah. Uh, I'm honored to be here, and I thank those who've been involved in this Clean Ener Energy Champion Award. And I know you've heard from Dr. Laura here a little bit, who's our resident expert on energy. And what we've tried to do in the state of Utah uh, I appreciate those who brought us together. I, I think energy is a topic that needs to have more discussion and uh, more dialogue and better understanding. A and uh, to talk about uh, the Utah way, which we've done, I think is just an example. It may work in your states. Uh, I think it would ought to be replicated how we've approached it in the state of Utah. But uh, again, I can tell you that my observation at least has been as I've been around the country, and uh, talk to others. Uh, I appreciate uh, uh, Senator Ayotte is here with us today and her leadership, and thank you for your service in the Senate and, and what you're doing today. But bringing us together and having these discussions, what I've learned is that the people of Utah and around the country want three things. They want to have sustainable, reliable energy. Uh, most of us have been someplace in the country where we've had a brownout. We don't like that. When we turn the switch, we want lights to appear. We want sustainable, reliable energy. Uh, we want it affordable. We want to know that it fits into our household budget. And if we have a business, we want to know that it's not going to break the budget, that we can actually be profitable. And uh, the third thing we want is we want it cleaner. That's really what the market is asking for out there. And I believe that the role of government is to allow the marketplace to work. So in Utah, we've taken a really kind of an all-of-the-above approach on energy. We've said this is a free market. There's competition out there. We know what the consumer wants. And let's see if the private sector cannot, in fact, deliver on those demands. The market is a very powerful force, and I believe that that power of the market will, in fact, push us in the direction we ought to be. Government ought to allow that to take place and to happen. We can kind of steer the ship, and certainly with uh, encouraging technological innovations and uh, across all of our resources, listening to the consumer, we can get to the right destination. Um, by the way, demand is not always just the lowest price because there is more and more increasing demand for making sure it's cleaner. And the good news for all of us, I think, is technology is there to help us. We see technology in all aspects of life. We look at our telephones and what we do, communication, transportation. Well, the same thing is true with, with energy. Uh, we want, in fact, to have it cleaner. And guess what? Technology innovation is taking place so that we now have cleaner energy that's more economic. It's more competitive with our traditional fuels. And guess what? On the other side of the equation is that because of technology and science and advancements, we have traditional fuels which is becoming cleaner. The end result of that is that the consumer benefits. I think it's hard, in fact, to have a healthy economy if you don't have an abundance of energy, at least as a catalyst, as a foundation for economic development and quality of life. And certainly, we've seen that take place in Utah. We've been recognized as the most dynamic, diverse, healthy economy in America today. And what I really like is the fact that the outlook we have, the future, has been uh, named by Art Laffer, Ronald Reagan's former economic advisor, as the best economic outlook of any state in America today. A lot of that has to do with our energy sustainability, our energy abundance, and what we've done to try to make sure that that continues to be thus and so. Let me, for the sake of time, just to mention, I, when I came into office knowing how important energy was and somewhat controversial, uh, we have a lot of public lands and how do you develop the public lands and uh, protect the natural resources. Sometimes people think those are not compatible. Uh, I, I differ. I think there is a ways to develop your energy resources and be compatible as good stewards of the earth. 
But I put together a 10-year energy plan. Never been done before. Uh, we did it. I took it to our Western Governors Association. We had a number of our states have adopted similar programs, at least the same concept of what is your 10-year plan? Every state ought to have a 10-year plan that slides and, ev and, and evolves uh, as the marketplace would require. I wished our country had a longer-term plan for energy. But states can lead the way, and states should lead the way. That's kind of the beauty of the United States of America, the leaders in innovation, the laboratories of democracy that we see in our states and our governors. On both sides of the aisle, I add. I put together 10 fundamental goals that I released here uh, just uh, this, earlier this year. I'll just highlight for them very quickly. One, uh, our, one of our goals with energy is to make sure that rural development occurs. Rural development economically has been a challenge, not just in Utah, but across the country. And again, the family farm, which my father's raised on a farm and that we still own the farm, but it doesn't employ as many people as when my dad was uh, growing up there. And so there's disruption in the marketplace. Well, rural Utah is feeling that disruption, and we're concerned about that. In Utah, uh, where we have the most healthy, diverse economy in America, it's, it's really confined mostly to the urban areas. So a desire for us is rural job creation as part of our goal, and energy development is a way to do that, because most of our rural areas in this country, and certainly in Utah, is where we find an abundance of our natural resources, our minerals, and our energy capability, whether it be coal, whether it be natural gas, wind, solar. Our uh, western desert is where we have a lot of solar farms being built in the state of Utah. And uh, again, it's, uh, this innovation, this development of energy cre does create economic opportunity in the rural parts of Utah. And part of the challenge with the rural Utah is the need to diversify and not just be have your economic eggs in one basket. So the diversification that comes with energy development rural is a good thing too. A uh, second goal I'll mention to you is that we want to advance energy innovation development, including our geothermal resources, hot water heat. Again, Utah is blessed with some hot water geothermal opportunities, and we're well on our way to this goal. We just received a $140 million grant from the Department of Energy uh, to advance the research and development of hot water heat, an innovative way to create electricity. It's called the FORGE Project, Frontier Observatory for Research in Geothermal Energy, FORGE. And uh, again, this is happening in the rural parts of Utah in our south-central part and really the heart of some of our re uh, renewable energy development, wind and solar, and now we have geothermal right there. Uh, we have realized nearly 1,000 megawatts of new utility-scale solar and over 350 megawatts of new wind resources. We're the largest in Utah, the largest user of wind power in the Intermountain West. So our portfolio is expanding and diversifying. At one time, we relied on about 85% coal. Now we're down to about 60% coal. Again, much more wind, solar, natural gas, a transitional fuel that we're using in Utah as well. Our solar investment in Utah uh, represents over $2 billion of investment. It put Utah number two in the nation in per capita basis for solar development. A third one is on finding efficiencies in our investments for energy. And again, we're realizing efficiencies, so we're the, the, uh, one of the leaders in the top 10 and for lead building development and making sure we do our conservation aspects and build buildings uh, better so we don't use as much energy. That, By the way, that industry has created about 31,000 jobs in the state of Utah, and we rank second in the nation when it comes to our elementary schools, K through 12, which in fact are LEED certified. So we're making some headways there when it comes to uh, efficiencies for energy use. Uh, the next goal I'll mention here as we come down the home stretch is that to advance alternative transportation and clean fuel technologies. Uh, it's certainly in all the news, everybody's talking about the new surge of electric cars whether it's a Tesla or anything else out there, we find that that is, in fact, something that is on the horizon. More and more people are investing and seeing the performance and the improvement of the uh, functionality of electric cars improving. Utah's been at the forefront on that. We're currently sixth in the nation per capita for the adoption of electric, in fact, powered vehicles. We've, in fact, put infrastructure along our corridors of our interstate highways where you can plug in and recharge the batteries on your cars. We're working with our national parks. I mentioned we have five of them, five national parks, we call them the Mighty Five. We have 43 state parks. 
We're, in fact, electrifying those so that you can go and when buses come and so we have minimal impact on these beautiful national park treasures that we have in Utah, that you'll travel through there with an electric vehicle, whether it be a car or a bus, by making sure that we have access to charging uh, capability in our national parks. We've partnered with seven other states, in fact, to, to advance con, uh, our, our ability to plan and coordinate and working together for regional electronic vehicles to make sure that we have connectivity in our roads and our arteries and, and byways. Um, I've also approached the refineries and said to them, because in Utah, I don't know how it is in your state, but uh, most of the pollution and air quality is coming from tailpipes. We don't want to, in fact, improve air quality with uh, restrictions on industry and business, but our tailpipes still remain to be a challenge, and so we've asked our refineries in Utah to bring in early before required uh, the Tier 3 fuels. And if we can do that, by the way, in Utah, that's like eliminating three out of every four cars on the highway. And you think about that in your own uh, situation. Again, most of the pollution that we have comes out of tailpipes. We are in love with our automobiles in the West in particular. This is going to be a major step. We've already had one step up. It's broken ground now called Endeavor, uh, our refinery there in Utah, and, and that's a, a step in the right direction. I think other refiners are going to follow. That's going to be a major step as far as having better fuels in a uh, traditional uh, form with this tier three, tier 3 fuel production. Uh, let me just mention a couple of highlights here in close, and that is that um, uh, again, I've mentioned this, and, and I, I really do believe this. I came into office as governor at the depths of the Great Recession. I'm in my 10th year as governor now, and, and uh, our focus was, let's see if we can't make Utah's economy turn around. In fact, we set a goal, let's be, see if we can't become the best performing economy in, in the nation. A pretty ambitious goal, as you can imagine, and people say, hey, we're just Utah, a smaller state, and nestled at the foot of the Rocky Mountains. But that gave us a goal. We put together a plan and said, if we can implement these things, we can reach this goal. But we also knew it was important to have energy sustainability and, in fact, become an exporter of energy. So we have that reliability capability. And Forbes Magazine, when they named us the best performing economy and the best place for business in America, said one of the reasons is the fact we have affordable, accessible energy in many forms. And that's been the basis for our improvement of our economic standing and our quality of life. And I believe in, in technology. I, I believe that we have the opportunity and the power that comes from those people working in their basement, their garages, research and development of big companies, small companies, and find innovation ways to solve the challenges that we face when it comes to energy production in the state and make sure we do it in a way that protects our environment also. Utah is blessed uh, with many energy resources. Uh, we don't have an energy shortage. We may have an energy affordability shortage, depending on what path we go down, but we have plenty of energy capability in this country, certainly in Utah. Our desire is, in fact, to find the right way with an all-of-the-above approach and a free market competitive environment. We believe that will get us to the place we need to be in representing those who we, in fact, are elected to represent as governors or people appointed to boards, your organization here, and trying to address the issues that are brought to us by the consumer. The free market actually, I think, will get us to there quicker, more effectively, and more efficiently, and on all of the above approach to anything else. It's certainly working in Utah, and I believe it worked for other states in the United States, uh, and uh, so I'd encourage everybody to try that. Um, I think we find the innovation, we couple that with smart growth. It will create the future that we all want to see when it comes to energy in this country. Uh, again, I, I appreciate the fact we've become more energy independent. It's a, not only an economic development issue, it's a national security issue. So I thank you for the opportunity to be here and the award given to the state of Utah. Opportunity to be here. I'm enthused about the future. I'm enthused about what we're doing. I'm enthused about the discussion. So thank you for what you're doing. Let's continue to partner. Let's continue to make people aware, educate others, and see if we can, in fact, foster more innovation and creativity in the marketplace. If, do, if we do that, I know that our America's future is, in fact, very good indeed. Thank you very much.